Hi, I'm Paul Dye, Kit Plane's editor-at-large, but I'm also a member of the EAA Safety Subcommittee working on Angle of Attack. And today, that's what we want to talk about. We've realized that Angle of Attack is more and more an important way for pilots to fly, and more interestingly, almost everybody with a modern home built has it already in their EFIS. But in order to use it, you have to calibrate it. And so what we're going to do today is show you how to calibrate the angle of attack system in a Garmin G3X Touch. So we're going to taxi out here in our RV6 with the G3X Touch. And I've taken Mark Cook, the editor-in-chief of Kit Planes, along with us to uh, explain this to you. So I'll be talking to him as we go through this uh, process. Be gentle, Paul. We will. We're flying out of Lakeview, Lake County Airport, in, uh, southern Oregon today. We might have to climb a ways to get out of, up into some smooth air. Lake County traffic RV, Flomax Air is going to be rolling to take off runway 35, Lake County. So we're going to climb up to altitude. We're actually going to be doing a stall, so we want about 3,000 feet AGL, and we're going to make sure we want smooth air to do this, because if you get a lot of rough turbulence, that's going to mess up the angle of attack. It's going to give you a less precise calibration. So ideally you'll do this uh, first thing in the morning. Make sure that you've got nice smooth air, you're cool, you're fresh, you're relaxed. So we're up here about 3,000 feet above ground and we're going to go ahead and bring up the, the uh, calibration wizard. So we hit menu and we hit menu again for the main menu and then we're going to go to setup and then we're going to get angle of attack. Now this airplane was already calibrated once, we're just going to do it again. We won't see a problem. So here are the four points that we're going to calibrate. And we're going to start off with the minimum visible AOA calibration. So we're going to hit calibrate, and it's going to come up and give us a little set of instructions. This procedure will calibrate the minimum value for the AOA gauge, bottom of the green range. Ensure the aircraft's in smooth air, clear of traffic, and a safe altitude for maneuvering. We've done a clearing turn. We've looked around. We're in good shape. The level flight at a desired reference airspeed, such as flap speed. So we're going to start slowing things down here to flap speed. Notice it's not doing anything until it tells us that we want to start. So we've got plenty of time. We're not in any kind of rush here. Coming down to the top of the white arc. Right about there. Riching it up just a little bit. There we go. And we're going to hit start. And we're going to maintain the desired reference airspeed. I'm going to get it back where I wanted it to be there. A little bit slower. And when I'm happy that I'm stable, and that's pretty good right there, I'm going to hit done. And it's calibrated the minimum AOA, visible AOA calibration. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to do basically the same technique. We're going to do the caution alert. We're going to calibrate that, and it's going to tell us that we're, make sure we're in clear air, and smooth air, and clear traffic. We've done that. We're going to be level flight at the desired airspeed for an audible stall warning. So we're going to start slowing it down, basically a slow flight. And you're hearing the beeping, that's because it's already been calibrated once. And that's about where I want it, in here, and I'm going to hit start. It's about 63, 64, get the nice and stable at the speed I want, and then say calibrate. Okay, so that's been done. And the last thing we're going to do, or the next thing we're going to do, is the stall warning calibrations. We'd calibrate, again, all the warnings, prepare to perform a power off stall. We're in good shape, prop, mixture, right? We'll hit start, and it says perform a power off stall and recover to level flight. So here we go, power's off. There's the stall, there's the brake, we'll recover, nice, and we hit done. Stall warning AOA calibration is successful, that's all there was to that. So now we're going to go back and we're going to do one more calibration, and that's the target approach calibration speed. And I like about 80 knots in this airplane, something like that, eh, 85. So we'll go ahead and pick up the speed we want. Hit start. Hold the speed. 
hit calibrate. And we're done. We'll hit done. We've got values for all of them, and it's important that these are in order. So we have a, the highest number here, down to a descending number here. And we're all done. So we'll go back, 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 and we'll go back to the airport. All there is to it. Have you seen an airport around here someplace, Mark? Nope. No, okay, it's out here somewhere. We'll find it. Holy smokes, it's cold out there. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the process, um, and, and hopefully it's, it's a lot more intuitive now. It doesn't require aerobatic flying. It doesn't require a 10,000-hour test pilot to do. It's really pretty simple. And the really good news is that if you have an EFIS, you already have the capability in your airplane. You just have to calibrate it. Flying with AOA is going to make you a better pilot, it's going to make you more precise, and more importantly, someday it may just save your life.